Thank you for participating and being part of that this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 4. I understand the time. And uh, we will minister some word of the Lord this morning. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that when he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Amen. Abraham, uh, the story of Abraham is a powerful story when it comes to speaking about faith and the life of Abraham, how it exemplifies faith. Uh, God counted Abraham's righteous, or accounted him righteous because he had the kind of faith that you see in verses 16 to 21 of what I just read. His faith was more than just an easy uh, believism or a mental ascent. Uh, it was strong and steadfast faith in God that caused him to trust and obey God's word under all circumstances. His faith was more than just a one-time confession. It was constant continual faith that caused him to wait patiently without wavering until God's promise came to pass. And so this morning I speak to you for just a few moments on I will not stagger. I will not stagger. Why was it that Abraham's faith was so strong and so steadfast and so constant, uh, so continual to be patient that he would trust and not waver and as the scripture says, he staggered not. He would not stagger. When you look at verse 16, you see how Paul had come to the conclusion that God had devised a, a, a type of faith that would save people. And he wrote about it in Romans chapter 3 and 26 to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. That saving grace which was uh, uh, enough to, that, that would be given to every person, not because we deserved uh, his grace or his mercy, uh, not because what the law could do, because then it would be our own merit, uh, but it was an unmerited favor that Jesus uh, allowed each and every one of us to be able to come into this wonderful example and lifestyle that we have through the power of faith. It was something that was firmly established, a ground uh, that would not be shaken. It depended not on the conformity to the law, but the promise uh, that would have never been established without the coming of Jesus Christ, the dying on the cross and the resurrection from the dead, uh, that he would be uh, the one who would give us life uh, and life more abundantly. Amen. Not only, the scripture says uh, in Romans chapter 4 and 13, not only to the descendants alone of Abraham uh, who were Jews or who had the law, but to all those who would possess uh, the same faith uh, as Abraham. Everyone uh, who would come to an understanding of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. As soon as you make a decision to believe on him, something is created inside of you that activates uh, your faith. Uh, a faith that realizes that none of us could be saved uh, without the grace of God. Uh, every one of us would be hopeless. Uh, but because uh, your faith is activated, something happens uh, inside of you that says, uh, I am in need of a savior. Uh, I can't do this by myself. Uh, I am a sinner. Uh, amen. That needs the absolute saving grace of an almighty God. Amen. Aren't you thankful this morning that it's not just for a certain group of people? I thought I would have an amen from every person in the audience this morning. Aren't you thankful uh, that it's not just uh, for a certain group of people, uh, amen, but everyone who can exercise uh, the powerful faith that Abraham possessed? Uh, amen. As it is written in verse 17, he's going back to Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. It says, neither shall thy name be any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. This is not something that, that God is saying could happen, might happen, uh, should happen. No, he's already speaking in the sense uh, that it has happened. Uh, he says, a, uh, a father of many nations have I made thee. This is not uh, something that's conditional upon something else. Uh, no, God said, Abraham, uh, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. It's literally to grant to you, constitute that there is going to be uh, a powerful family that you're going to possess. Uh, the exact same word is used in the Septuagint, uh, the, the New Testament uh, 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 Greek, uh, where it uses the exact same uh, meaning of a word that's used in Genesis 17 and 5, uh, that it's not just a possibility but it is that I have made thee. I'm so glad this morning that everybody that's in the house of the Lord, it's not a might, a maybe, if you qualify, if you do enough good things, no, none of those things is what it matters this morning. He already sees you on the other side of your trouble. He already sees you on the other side of your struggle. He already sees you on the other side of your sin. He already sees you uh, on the other side of your failure, uh, your faults, uh, your weaknesses, uh, your downfalls, your pitfalls. Uh, he already sees you uh, on the other side. And because of that believing, activating faith that causes us to repent, turn our heart to, to the Lord, away from the past, away from the lifestyle that we once lived and say god i'm desired to give myself to you i'm desiring god to activate my faith that i want my past forgiven and because you and i every one of us every one of us you can go to god yourself you don't have to speak it through a man or a woman or some type of an individual no no you have an advocate with the father you can go directly to the almighty god this morning and say jesus i'm desiring to repent of my sin i want my past forgiven that's the power of the faith that abraham possessed Verse 18 says, who, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. It was an apparent hope, a ground of hope that he believed in a promise, an explicit hope that what God had said would be. I'm just going to insert here a lot of people struggle in this area right here. How would a loving God, powerful God, and almighty God give me an opportunity to be his child? A lot of people struggle with the idea that I could never get to a place where I would qualify, be good enough, do enough for him reach a level that he would accept let me tell you that is a lie 
from the pit of hell. Amen. The same faith that Abraham possessed is the same type of faith that you can possess this morning. That the promise is not just for a few. The promise for is for everybody that would exercise their faith. And that's the way Paul states it. He says this in verse 19, not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He's speaking about the natural story about them having a child. Abraham's 100. Sarah's 99. They're past the age of having children. In the natural sense, this is not possible. The writer of Hebrews, he says, uh, Minds well have said they were dead. He's not talking about physically, but to the point where no more children are coming. <laughs> no possibility of a child is being born. Abraham has reached 100. The story is told and Sarah is told that she will have a child and she even laughs at it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's a, quite a joke. I'm well past the age of being able to have children. And the, Paul writes and he says, it was as if they were dead. Dead to the possibility that there would ever be a hope of a promise that would happen in their life. A lot of people are dealing with that type of mentality in 2023. I've gone too far. It's not possible. Too, many, too much water under the bridge. Too many things have happened in my life. I've got too many things to get over. I've got too many things to correct. I've got to get all this straightened out before I can come to church and come to God. Let me tell you, you don't get good enough to come to God. You come to God so you can get good. Amen. You'll never ever reach. I'll never reach a place where I qualify. But there is a hope of the faith that is in me that I will not stay dagger at this morning I will not and so Paul writes to the church at Rome and he says uh, it was as if uh, Abraham and Sarah were already dead the possibility of a promise happening was well past the years but then he writes this powerful verse verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was not moved. He was not agitated. He was firmly set and believed in the promise of God that what God had said would happen. This morning, how? How is it that you can overcome unbelief to a place where you stagger not at the promises of God. See, the contrast of not staggering at the promise is between unbelief and faith. And so how do I, how do I overcome my unbelief? Number one, you overcome unbelief by faith in knowing God's will. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God if God said it will happen it will happen if God's will is for your life to receive the promise you will receive the promise if it's God's will that no one should perish you have the opportunity this morning to be in the house of the Lord and not perish it's already his will it's already his desire. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You overcome unbelief by knowing what God's will is. Because when you get that firmly into your spirit, it's not about the length of time. It's not about how. It's not about who's involved. 
None of those things are factors that matter. When you get it into your spirit that it's God's will, you can be assured that it will happen. No devil in hell, no person on this earth can keep it from happening. If it's God's will and you've got the assurance that he wants it to happen. What am I talking about? I'm talking about you praying for a loved one. Maybe a spouse or a child. Maybe it's someone that you've been reaching for. Maybe it's something that's to do with your health or your finance. Maybe it's something to do with ministry or direction in your life. If you've got it in your your heart uh, that it's God's will uh, and it's been confirmed to you let me tell you uh, it will happen that's just not me trying to hype you up this morning uh, when unbelief is removed by faith Faith is the substance of things hoped for uh, evidence of things uh, not seen Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Music come. Number two, you overcome unbelief by rejecting fear through faith. Paul wrote to the Philippian church, he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. The enemy, flesh, the world would love for you to live in fear. To be overcome with fear. Fear will cause you to live in unbelief. Hear me this morning. It'll keep you close to the nest. You won't venture out. Fear will grip you so hard that you will be afraid to fail. Failure is not your destiny. Your destiny is determined by your desire to say, I'm not going to live by fear. I'm going to step out into realms of even the unknown even into things i'm not sure yet but i've got my my focus on god's will and i refuse to live by fear let me tell you that's what faith does okay i'll give you some idea fear can be that it's not possible to have churches in different areas of the city. That's what fear will tell you. And faith will say, I'm stepping out because I know it's God's will. Because it's His will that no one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I'm not going to stagger at the promise of God. I'm going to allow what God's put into my spirit as his will. And I refuse to live in fear. That's not talking about being unwise. That's not talking about just throwing caution to the wind. It's none of those things. It's about not staggering at the promise of God because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't have this in my notes for this morning, but I have to tell you, I called Brother Buster yesterday, Arden Buster, who pastored this church for many years back in the 70s and 80s. I so highly respect that man. And I called to talk to him about a vision, a prophecy that had happened in the 70s. He remembers it quite vividly.
and how the original church was built. I believe he told me the prophecy came in 75. That God would bring us here. But he would also move us from here. And all of a sudden they built the entryway. Which was in the plans. Brother Goddard came along. And Brother Buster thought is that the case no that's not the that's not the the prophecy then they built the sanctuary and again God reminded for the bustard of the prophecy that happened in the 70s and brother buster thought I wonder if that's the fulfillment of the prophecy and God said not yet and then we did our vision casting of what we desire to see happen last Sunday. And Brother Buster was watching that service. And instantaneously, God said, that's what I was talking about in 75. That it's not just in this building, but it's the spreading of this incredible promise that we will not stagger at across this city in such a powerful way that everybody will get to hear this wonderful truth that you and I possess this morning. As I listened to the elder, the Holy Ghost riled up inside of me And I felt the confirmation of the Spirit as I listened to the elder 40 some years later. God is allowing what he prophesied to happen in this city. And you and I get to be part of what God is doing. I will not stagger at the promises of God, but rather pray, God, increase my faith. Amen. Like the faith of Abraham, that it was already as if it had already happened. I don't have time to go through the rest of my notes. You have to reject fear and understand the power of God's love that He has for everybody. Everybody that's here this morning in this building, everybody that's watching or listening, and everybody that has not heard at this point. And the next few verses 21, 22, 23 it uses this word imputed. They were fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore, verse 22 says, it was imputed to him, Abraham, for righteousness. But what I'm caught up in is verse 23. Because this is what 23 says. Now it was not written for his sake alone. What happened in Genesis chapter 15, chapter 17, chapter 22. You can read the whole story. None of it was just for Abraham alone. That it was imputed to him. Verse 24. But for us also. Oh, you haven't got it. You didn't get it. The faith that brought a promise of a child at age 100. The faith that Abraham was willing to say, if I slay my son, 
I know that God is able to raise him back up again. I'm talking about a faith uh, that's not normal. This is not, well, I believe in God and I'm going to go to church and, and I'm just going to be an attendee. No, oh, that's not the kind of faith I'm talking about. I'm talking about a faith uh, that Abraham had uh, that Paul said uh, it wasn't just written for him, uh, but for us uh, also. To whom it shall be imputed. Uh, that means uh, that there is a absolute confidence there is a reckoning there is an absolute understanding that what God says will happen a credit a reckoning you can calculate it or as our old sayings go you can take it to the bank amen what has been spoken will happen why is that possible well if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If we believe the same power that was able to give Abraham and Sarah a child at such a late age, if we believe in the power of an almighty God that a ram would be caught in the thicket so his son would not have to be slain, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then you and I can have that type of faith. Mark chapter 9. I, I, I know I'm, I'm over time. But I have to give you this. Mark chapter 9. I think it's 23. Is it 23? I, I can't tell you the whole story. I don't have all the time. But a, a man had a son who was possessed. And the disciples prayed for him and they, they, nothing happened. And the man comes to Jesus. And he wants Jesus to do something about his son. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Jesus said, If you can get it in your spirit that I can do it, nothing's impossible. That's what he said. And then the man responded with verse 24. Straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I know that you can do it, but I've got reservations in the back of my mind. How is this going to happen? How is this going to take place? How is this all going to come to pass? How is this going to come to fruition? That's what the man said. God, I know that you can do it. But I've got some things in my mind that I'm having a difficult time understanding, figuring out, trying to put two and two together to get four. He was being honest. It didn't reduce God's power. Jesus spoke to the man and what he was possessed of and said, you come out of him. And immediately, immediately, the man was restored and healed. That's the type of faith that I'm talking about this morning. That mission point cannot stagger at. The faith that caused Abraham to hold on to the promise even though it seemed impossible. And because of that, Paul wrote to the Roman church and said, if you can, if you can get a hold of the same faith that Abraham had, the same faith that, rose, that raised Jesus from the dead, if you can get a hold of that, you'll understand that what was written was not just for Abraham only. But it was written for you and I in 2023. So I ask you to stand. I hope your roast and ham and scallops not burning.
it on a slower heat next time. I'm looking for individuals, a church, a family of God that will make the statement to yourself personally and to God alone. God, I will not stagger at your promises, but rather through faith, let it be activated in me that what seems impossible, let it be done for the furtherance of your kingdom for the furtherance of the gospel in my life personally in my family's life in my relatives my neighbors the people I work with the people that I'm acquaintances with on a daily or weekly basis the people who I have contact with the people I've been praying for the people who are hungry the people who God are hopeless and don't have any direction let the faith arise inside of me that an absolute moving of your spirit will happen in my life first and then go as I got off the phone with the elder yesterday I felt such an encouragement in my spirit I didn't know what happened in 75 but I trust that what was being spoken into my spirit yesterday was what God said would take place uh, way back then I'm thankful for the congregation that's here this morning. But this church cannot hold what God has in store for this city. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot hold what God has in store for this city. Just the law of the harvest. I'm not even going beyond into another dimension of faith. I'm just talking about the law of the harvest. The law of the harvest is at least 25,000. At least a quarter. That's just the law of the harvest. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to let my faith soar into what God has in store. I want to be part of what He is doing. I just opened this altar this morning. If you're like the man in Mark 9, that's that's okay. I opened this altar to everyone. The Lord saw his faith. The Lord saw that he believed. The Lord saw that he followed him. The Lord saw that he came to him. The Lord saw that this was his resort. God saw all of that. The man's response was, I believe. Help the part of me that's having a hard time believing. Huh? God, I pray right now for every person. God, across this congregation, a solemnness of your presence, God, has just come in. And I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm praying, God, for every individual, God, in this place right now. God, every child, every young person, every adult, every, Lord, every senior, every elder of this church, God, allow your power and your spirit, God, to sweep across us right now. Hallelujah. With a a confirmation, God, that we will not stagger at the promises that you have for us. God, we will not stagger. Sing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, church. Hallelujah. Let God raise up inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it be imputed to you for righteousness.